Hi there. Today I'm going to show you an option. Instead of doing the standard value scale on a strip like that, this might be a little bit more interesting way to do the same project. So you'll have the choice between doing the standard value scale or just kind of inventing one out of your mind and applying it to a cube form that we draw. So you're not having to set up a real cube in life. This is just going to be constructed out of your imagination. So this is one of the few situations where I'll let you just sort of, um, you know, make up your own shapes in order to apply the principle of the value scale to um, a three-dimensional form. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're going to start out with our vine charcoal. I've already pre-toned the paper using some vine charcoal and I buffed, buffed it all in all the way to the edges. And then I'm just going to kind of make up the scene. So I'm going to put in a really simple eye level line that represents sort of the edge of a table so that we can get another value up here that's different from the value that's hitting the tabletop. And then I'm going to just draw a really kind of flattened diamond shape to kind of represent the top of this box. I'm, you know, roughly thinking about these two lines leading to one vanishing point, these two heading off in the other direction, but I'm not worried much more than that about just kind of giving um, some basic ideas. So your sketch can be as simple as that. There's a, probably a little too much convergence on this side, so um, anyway, it's, it's not that critical that any of this is very accurate because I won't be grading uh, the accuracy of the angles. <clears throat> it's just strictly a way to break the design into seven or eight different areas so that you can apply a different value to each shape. And then I'm going to even pretend that there's a cast shadow coming off of here. So I'm kind of thinking about this line and this line and this line and this line all roughly heading in the same direction, but um, this is close enough for our purposes. This is vine charcoal, so it's really important that you're not using your compressed charcoal for these initial lines because we need to be able to get rid of them eventually and have just one shape against another shape. So these are just temporary lines. I'm drawing them very lightly just to have a rough idea of where to to start doing the erasing and the adding more charcoal. So this is fine. So in my imaginary world here, I'm imagining that the light's coming a little bit from behind. I'm going to make this tone my lightest tone, as if the light's pretty directly above the block, but slightly behind it so that we get a cast shadow. And then this side, I'm imagining, maybe gets a little bit of raking light where it's not in full shadow, but it's not getting as much direct light as the top plane is. So this will be my second value. In fact, I might just kind of diagram it out lightly so I can kind of keep it straight in my head what's going to be what. And then I'm imagining that it's a pretty light value box. So maybe it's a white box or a very light gray box. So even in the deepest shadows, it's not going to be super dark here, but it should be darker than the area that's getting a little bit of raking light. And then I think I'll make the base of the ground plane sort of our fourth value, middle value, and then the cast shadow, since this started out, let's say, as a middle gray, even when it's in full light, when it falls into shadow, it should be at least two steps darker than that, or one or two steps darker. So it's got to be a four. Uh, I'm sorry, if this is a four, this should be a five or a six. And then maybe we'll go even darker here. So maybe this will be our solid black value or a very dark gray. <clears throat> so the first step, let's just go ahead and bring in some of the lights. I think it's maybe easier to do the, the erasing first before we get into the background area. So you'll be using a combination of your stenciling paper. I'll just grab some out of the trash. I forgot to prepare that ahead of time. <clears throat> so I'll have a scrap of paper here. And the first step is just to get this top plane as light as we can. So you could start with your kneaded eraser if you want to. And I'm using this scrap of paper to save me a lot of time so I can still get a nice straight edge without having to be super careful with um, my edge there. So notice I'm trying to also erase the vine charcoal line that I had there. I don't want any lines in this finished drawing when I'm done. It should just be one shape next to another shape to define those plane changes. So I'm going to keep shifting this line until I can hit the area where the contour line was. and then I'm also going to be erasing with my kneaded eraser. I usually start on the stencil sheet and then pull across it so that I don't wrinkle it up. But um, you could also just erase right along the edge with your 
vinyl eraser or a little bit firmer eraser so that it takes off a little bit more charcoal. And the front edge here. I've got loads of crumbs all over my drawing, so I'm going to knock it off over the trash real briefly. <clears throat> Bring it back up. All right, so we've got our basic light shape there. I also like to get the dark values in early so that they give an atmosphere or a neighboring value that helps me judge how dark the other things need to go. So this is as bright as we can get, unless we put a lot more work into the erasing. I might be able to get it a little bit brighter in that front corner if I really work at it. You can also blow the charcoal off. Uh, but now I want to bring in some darks here. So I'm going to flip this around just so I'm not having to drag my sleeves across the charcoal. And what we're going to be doing is using our compressed charcoal. The I like the rectangular ones for this purpose, but if you have a round one, that can work too. You just have to be a little bit more careful that you've um, primed it by rubbing off the varnish so that you can get a nice even shape there. And I'm not going to be using the end of the charcoal. I'm, I don't want to add any lines because remember the compressed charcoal is really hard to blend in once you've got lines there. So we're thinking more about shapes of value that we're putting in there. And I'm going to be laying it on the side and pressing a little bit harder with my first finger than I am with the, the fingers that are holding the back end of the charcoal. So bear down quite hard. Notice that I'm not drawing a line. I'm trying to build in a shape. And this whole background area doesn't need to be solid black, but I want it very dark right where this light plane is going to be. So if you want, you can press really hard when you're right. Again, I'm pressing harder at this end of the charcoal than I am on the back end, and I'm trying not to blend or blur the shape that I've already drawn. Try to be as precise as you can there. And then as the charcoal moves away from the block, you can just ease up on the pressure. So the more times you go over this, you just kind of feather it out and it gets a little bit lighter and lighter. So there's less pressure as we're working out here, more pressure as we're next to an edge that has to be in sharp focus. So what I'm noticing is there's still quite a bit of texture back here that really pops forward visually. So if you want to make sure that background really stays back spatially, you can go in and carefully blend that area. I want to make sure I don't blend across the box itself because I do want to keep that sharper focus than, let's say, this area back here. But where the back edge of the table is, I don't mind if that goes slightly blurry because I want that part of the drawing to feel like it's farther away from us. So I'm intentionally going to allow that to blend together a little bit. Softer focus back there. And um, up here. So maybe just a little bit of smearing across there. And if this ground plane is a little darker toward the, that back edge of the table than it is up here in the front, that also is going to help the whole tabletop plane feel like it's tilting away from us a little bit more effectively. So all of those tricks are helpful in suggesting depth and three-dimensional quality of your object. So I'm just letting that value blend. I'm protecting the part of the box that I want to keep nice and white so that I'm not bringing charcoal into that area accidentally. And on this side also, I'll allow a little bit of that charcoal. So I'm barely touching this here. I'm just taking some of the charcoal that's already on my tissue and just allowing it to go across that part of the table. So it, and I want it to be almost imperceptible where those values between here and here transition. So you just want a nice gentle blend on both of those sides. <laughs> Blow off the extra charcoal again. Okay, so now I want to decide if I need to erase this plane or maybe this is my number two value. I think for now I'm going to see if I can leave that there. I might have to make it a little lighter if I can't get other values that are dark enough. But to make this one feel a little darker than this one, I'm going to add a little bit more charcoal to that side. 
So I think for this part, I'll just see if adding some vine charcoal, not, so this is not compressed, this is the really lightweight vine charcoal that's very easy to blend in. I'm just going to add a little bit more layer of the vine and see if we can get that tone to be consistent from edge to edge of this little diamond shape on the side of the box. So I'm protecting the background areas while I blend the inside of the box. And I'm noticing I still have what feels like a, a line there at the top edge. I want to hide that as well. So this stencil paper, this masking paper, helps me blend that tone without worrying about blurring that edge at the top of the box. So we've got, these are pretty distinct now and that's quite a bit darker. I feel like we need to go a little bit darker here. So my goal here, this will be one of our two darkest values. With the shadow, I think just to keep things simple, I'm just going to have that shadow come straight out from this edge of the box. I, I just noticed there's still some line there, so I want to blend that in. But the shadow I'll just carry over from there. And I want it pretty dark because it has to be a couple steps darker than the tabletop value. So I'll use a little bit of compress and maybe a little bit of vine to just kind of help blend it in. And I'm just going to have that shadow end where that back edge of the box ends. So to blend that in, I'll work on this side first, and then I'll protect the bottom edge of the box while I blend that other side. So that gives us a pretty crisp shape there. Protect the box while I bring the shadow right up to the bottom edge of it. And it's a little bit lighter here, so I'm going to add a tiny bit more charcoal to that top edge. a little bit more crisp. So I still am trying to make each tone pretty even from edge to edge so they're not splotchy. So you'll be fine-tuning going back in with the erasers or going back in with the charcoal until you get those six or seven shapes of unique values. Each one should be a slightly different value than the other ones in the drawing. Okay, I feel like these are still pretty close. So I think what I want to do is go one step darker so that the background's a little darker than that side of the box. And then we'll evaluate again. Add more vine charcoal, and I can go right over this other shadow. You don't want to have any sort of halo around your shadows or around the box. You want to just bring that value, that level of darkness, right up to the other shapes. I want to protect my second lightest value from getting extra graphite or charcoal onto it. The compressed charcoal is pretty durable once it's buffed in. You can see I'm not really able to lift much of that off of there. So when I come in with more vine charcoal, it's still easier to move around than the compressed charcoal is. 
All right, so this is definitely a step darker than that. We can see it at that edge. This is uh, quite a dark gray and then this is dark too. I don't have anything that's truly black. The other thing I want to do is maybe see if I can brighten up this front corner of the box a tiny bit or slightly blur the back edge. So I'm going to just soften that back edge a tiny bit so it's not quite as not quite um, the as contrasty. I'd rather have a little more attention coming here on the front corner instead. So I'm going to do a little bit more aggressive erasing and see if I can get that a little bit brighter right at the front corner to help advance that towards us a little bit better. So I'm scrubbing really hard here. Right across the edge of that paper. It's got a little muddy so I'm going to go back in and try to make it not quite so smeary. And then this edge also got smeared a little bit, so I will try to clean that up also. All right, and then this is now I want to blend it a little bit more smoothly. So the kneaded eraser is the, the one that's more adaptable, like you can fine-tune the values a little more gradually with the kneaded eraser than you can with the vinyl eraser. And this is less likely to leave a lot of crumbs on your drawing, so I really like the kneaded eraser for those reasons. So if you notice there's some blotchy areas, you can just fold your kneaded eraser and kind of pinch it into a narrow point and then hit you know, just the line. Let's say you still have a little bit of vine charcoal showing up as a line somewhere at an edge. If you can't just rub it out using the stencil, you can sometimes hit just the line and hide those hide those edges a little bit. Got a little bit of a line there, and I think it's just from where the charcoal collected against the paper, but. I want to sharpen this corner a tiny bit too. It seemed like it got a little bit light on that. Okay. So, again, you can fuss back and forth with it. Try to keep the values a little bit more crisp. I do want to get a really solid black in here somewhere, and I think the best spot in my particular design is in the background. So, even though I've blended this in, it's still not as rich of a black as it can be. So, I'm going to go back in with a little bit more at least right around the top of the box where the contrast is most noticeable here. You want the slightly blurry, not super out of focus, but not drawing too much attention to itself. going a little bit lighter on this one I think just to bring it out from the ground plane a little bit more and this corner Let's see if I 
keluarga ini all right I think that's a good spot to stop you have the idea at least of how to get those shapes protected from smearing by using the scrap piece of paper and the goal is to try to show me at least five or six different shades of gray and some areas that you can achieve a true black. It doesn't have to be this whole shape, but at least somewhere in the background, I'd like to see you get as rich of a black as you can. And then if it fades slightly to a, a little bit lighter gray, that's okay. We'll stop right there. <laughs>